show that gives grown-ups a chance to win $1 million. All they have to do is prove that they are smarter than a fifth grader. It's that easy. All right, let's meet our class. Kyle, Jacob, Alana, Spencer, and Marky. You ready to meet your new classmate? Yeah! He is a 35-year-old music technologist who attended St. Pascal Grammar School in Chicago. Welcome, Steve Nalefa. Hey, Hello, Steve. How Hello. are you? I'm doing great. All right. Welcome to our classroom. Oh, look the at that. Grammar school. Nice, nice hair. Why is every school picture like on a bad hair day? Uh, you know, they all were bad hair days back then. It, it, well, you're kind of still having a bad I, hair you know, day. That's true. All right. You actually went to Yale. That is true. An Ivy League grad, 3.6 GPA. Wow. <laughs> Well, welcome to our fifth grade classroom. Oh, These are your new classmates. Hi, guys. Hi. You're actually going to be able to cheat off of them during the course of this game, but right now, pick one of them and let's get started. Oh, boy. I think I'm going to go with Kyle. Kyle, come on up here. Yeah, buddy, let's do this. Steve, let me tell you how this game works. On the board, you're going to see 10 subjects. They range from first grade through the fifth grade. You can pick them in any order you like. Your first correct answer is worth $1,000. The 10th question, should you answer it correctly, is worth $500,000. You ace this test, and I'm sure with a GPA like that, you've aced a lot of tests in your life. We're going to give you an additional grade school question that will be worth $1 million. <laughs> All now, right. so far, we have not had a million dollar winner. So, if this mm -hmm. test gets to be too difficult at any point, you can drop out of school, okay? All right. You can take the money and run. But before you do, you have to promise me you will look into that camera and tell the entire world I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Um, <laughs> all right, we I got promise. A deal? We got a deal. Did you ever think about this. dropping out of Yale? Y no, not really. <laughs> Let's find out. Is Steve Nalepa smarter than a fifth grader? Woo! All right, Steve. There are your ten subjects. Pick your first one and let's play for a thousand dollars. Well, um, I think I'm gonna go with math. That seems to be my strongest. Fourth grade let's math. Go with math. Fourth grade math. Bypassing the first, second, and third grades. Well, I can see why. It says here you were a member of the math club. I was the I was the president of the math president club. President of the math club. All right, here we go. Steve, the one thousand dollar question is: If a car is traveling at forty miles per hour, how long will it take to go one hundred and ninety miles? If a car is traveling at forty mph, how long will it take to go one hundred and ninety miles? Kyle just locked in his answer. All right, now, during the course of the game, you have two cheats. You have a peek and a copy. With a peek, you could look at your classmates' paper, decide if you want to go with their answer or not. With a copy, you have to take the answer they've written down. And you have one save, which means if you answer incorrectly, but your classmate at the podium is right, you get the money, we keep playing, OK? All right. What you thinking, Steve? Well, I am thinking if it's going 40 miles an hour, you got in four hours, it's going to go 160 miles. That leaves 30 miles left, which is 30 over 40, which is 3 fourths, and that is 45 minutes. So I am going to say four hours and 45 minutes. The question is, if a car is traveling at 40 miles per hour, how long will it take to go 190 miles? You said four hours and 45 minutes. The captain of the math club <laughs> is absolutely right. You got a thousand dollars.
All right, Steve, you got $1,000. Pick another subject. Let's turn it into $2,000. All right. Oh, boy. What do you think, Kyle? Now, you like animal science, right? Yeah, I like animal science. Yeah. Yeah. You like animal science? All right, let's go with first grade animal science. First grade animal science. Steve, here is the $2,000 question. True or false? The following picture is an image of a dinosaur called the Tyrannosaurus Rex. True or false? The following picture is an image of a dinosaur called the Tyrannosaurus Rex. True or false? Kyle just locked in his answer. What do you think? I'm going to say false. That is not a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Here's what your classmate Kyle said. He said false. You're both right. You got $2,000, Steve. All right. All right. All righty. Kyle's got to return to the classroom. They can only help you two questions at a time. Sorry, right, Steve. You got to pick another classmate. Let's All play right. for $5,000. I'm going to go with Jacob. Jacob, come up here. All right, Jacob. Yeah, let's do it, buddy. All right, Jacob, we've got eight subjects on the board. If you had to pick your two best, what would you say? Probably life science and U.S. history. U.S. Whoa. history is a fifth grade question, Steve. Yeah, I... Jacob, I think I'm going to start a little bit uh, lower on the scale. We're going to go with first grade English. First grade English. Here is the $5,000 question. How many nouns are in the following sentence? The rabbit ran to the cafeteria and ate a big salad. How many nouns are in the following sentence? The rabbit ran to the cafeteria and ate a big salad. Jacob has locked in his answer. All right. Well, let's see. Let's take a look at that, break that down. The rabbit is a noun. It ran to the cafeteria. Person, place, or thing is a noun, right? Okay. So I am going to say that there are three nouns in the following sentence. Steve, let me ask you a question. How many nouns are in the following sentence? Steve has $5,000. We're going to be playing for $10,000 when we come back. Our contestant, Steve Nalepa, has got $5,000. We're about to play for $10,000. How you feeling? Oh, I'm pretty good. I'm a little nervous, but are you now? Right. So, somebody that graduated from Yale is a little bit nervous in the fifth grade classroom. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> okay. Well, you have seven subjects left on the board. Pick one of them, and let's turn $5,000 into $10,000, Steve. All right. Let's see. All right, how about third grade measurements? Third grade measurements. You ready? I'm ready. Let's For $10,000, do that. Steve, here's the question What unit of measurement is abbreviated OZ? What unit of measurement is abbreviated OZ? Jacob has locked in his answer. What you thinking? Well, I am thinking that that could be only one thing, and that is the ounce. I'm going to say ounce. Really? Well, let's see what the class said. Oh, we right. haven't gotten around to spelling yet in the class, all right? I like Spencer's. That's good for the art one. <laughs> You're right. You got $10,000. Yeah. 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 
Jacob has got to return to the classroom. They can only help you two questions at a time. Nice work, Jacob. <laughs> Steve, pick another classmate. Oh. I think I'm going to go with Marky. Marky, yeah, come on up here. First. Yeah, Marky, let me do this. All right. Hello, Marky. Hello, Jeff. This is an important question, Steve, because up until this point, if you'd flunked out of school, you would have walked out of here with nothing. You get this question right, the worst you can walk away here with is $25,000. Marky, yes. we have six subjects left. If you had to pick two of them to help Steve with, what would you say? Life science and health. Life science and health, second and third grade. Oh boy. But it's up to you, Steve. Well, I think I'm gonna go with second grade health. Second grade health. The $25,000 question is, true or false, the human shoulder is a ball and socket joint. True or false, the human shoulder is a ball and socket joint. <laughs> Marky's locked in. You look like one of the extras from all that jazz, Steve. <laughs> what are you thinking? I am going to say that the human shoulder is in fact a ball and socket joint, and that is true. And hopefully she'll save me if I'm wrong. The class is not unanimous in their answer. You need a shoulder to cry on here? <laughs> All right, let's see well, for the heck of I it. If, if you're wrong, does Marky have the capability of saving you? You said true. She said true. If it's not true, she can't save you, and you're out of here. Thank God it's true. Woo! You got $25,000. All right! Woo! The shoulder is a ball and socket joint. Woo! Yeah! All right, you guys. Steve, we're playing for $50,000. Woo! It's no lose. It's no lose. You have twenty-five thousand. Even if you miss the question, you're leaving with twenty-five thousand. Woo! You think you're gonna make it to a million? We're gonna do it, Jeff. We're gonna do it. Okay. Well, you've got both your cheats left. You've got your saved left. Pick another subject. Let's go for fifty, Steve. You said life science, right? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go with third grade life science. Third grade life science. The $50,000 question is coming up when we come back. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Steve Nalepa, has got $25,000. We are about to play for $50,000. You selected third grade life science. You ready to see the question? Yes. Steve, the $50,000 question is, which one of these is a mammal? A seahorse, a sea lion, or a sea urchin? Which one of these is a mammal? Seahorse, sea lion, or sea urchin? Classmate Marky has locked in. Whew. Well, seahorse, sea lion, sea urchin, sea 50 grand. Uh, I see a lot of seas. <laughs> well, I know the sea urchin, that's a little bit of a, I'm not feeling the sea urchin. The seahorse, 
Yeah, I don't, I, you know, the sea lion is the biggest of all of them, and uh, I think I'm gonna go with sea lion. Clearly I'm very nervous here, but I'm gonna stick with that sea lion, B. is a mammal, you've got $50,000. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Steve. I want you to tell me what we're about to play for. Look on that board. Uh, $100,000. $100,000. Here's the good news. You have both your cheats left. You've got your peak and your copy and your save. We have four subjects left on the board. Whew. This is the farthest anybody has gone on this show without cheating. Whoa. Steve, pick another classmate. Oh, boy. I'm going to go with Alana. Alana. Now we got a second grade, a fourth grade, and two fifth grade questions up there. If you had to help Mr. Steve with two of them, which ones would you pick? I don't even think he needs my help. Wow. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm saying because he's smart. Yeah, he's, he is well, smart. I, well, I definitely need your help. So what are your favorites? World Geography and Social Studies. World Geography and Social Studies. Second Excellent. grade and fourth grade. Well, that's good. Let's go with second grade world geography. Second grade world geography. Steve, for $100,000, here is the question. Which continent is the least populated? Which continent is the least populated? Alana has locked in. What do we know about continents, Steve? Well, we know there are seven of them. And we are here in North America, and that is certainly not the least populated. Right. Um, I'm gonna have to say that the least populated continent is Antarctica. Money. <laughs> it is a lot of money. Your bank account just got more populated. You got a hundred thousand dollars. Steve, we're playing for a hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. All right, now, before the show, you told our producers that if you got to the $300,000 level, that you had a special dance that you would do for them. <laughs> I will bust a backspin right there. If I All right. Before. I was in a breakdance crew back when uh, fifth grade. There we go, past the break. <laughs> Three oh. subjects, Steve. Which one do you want? We're going to go with fourth grade social studies. Fourth grade social studies. Now, we are in serious money territory. Do not answer too quickly. Remember, you have two cheats left. Your peak and your copy. You've got your save left. $100,000 on the line. Whew. The $175,000 question is, since the late 1930s, what calendar date has been designated for the inauguration of a United States president? Since the late 1930s, 
what calendar date has been designated for the inauguration of a United States president? Alana just locked in. Oh, boy. Remember, you got both your cheats. You could peek at your classmate's paper. You could copy her paper, but that means you must take the answer she has written down. Or if you guess incorrectly and your classmate at the podium has the right answer, they can save you. Steve, this is the first time I've seen you look a little worried. <laughs> that is not a confidence builder. Oh, boy. What does that mean at Yale? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it's in January. Oh, man. A few guys that went to Yale have been inaugurated. Indeed. Indeed. Do you know what date that happened on? Oh, man. Oh, boy. This is pretty nerve-wracking, I gotta say. Well, I think I am going to use my peak. Peak. <laughs> Alana, your nine-year-old classmate, Mr. Yale, said January 20th. You know, She's only been alive for two presidents. It's true, and you know, the funny thing is that that was my first reaction. That is my mother and my aunt's birthday, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Seeing as uh, Alana has confirmed my suspicions, I am going to go with January 20th. So you finally cheated. <laughs> oh, man. Were there any other dates you were thinking of besides January 20th? I was thinking January 21st, but... See, if you had said January 21st, you would have been wrong. Because the right answer it's January 20th, $175,000. Oh, yes! <laughs> we are going to be playing for $300,000 right after. fifth grader. Our contestant, Steve Nalepa, has got $175,000. We're about to play for $300,000. You're excited about winning $300,000. I'm excited because you said if you win $300,000, you're going to break dance for us right here on this show. We are down to two subjects. Your classmate Alana has got to return to the classroom. You are down to your last classmate. All right, All right Spencer, Spencer, come up here. Yeah, buddy. Let's do this. You have one cheat left. You have your copy. You've got your save remaining. You've got two subjects. What do you want to do? Oh, boy. Um, I'm gonna go with fifth grade astronomy. And... Fifth grade astronomy. <laughs> Steve, the $300,000 question is... In the initials of the federal agency known as NASA, what word does the first A stand for? In the initials of the federal agency known as NASA, what word does the first A stand for? <laughs> Classmate Spencer has locked in. Wow. 
Well. Were you a, a space junkie growing up? You know, I, uh, we did go down and visit Cape Canaveral at one point. Did you? Um, don't answer too quickly, okay? Uh, don't worry about Steve, that. Steve, you can walk out of here right now with $175,000. <laughs> That's a lot of money. I want to see you get this question right, because I really want to see you break dance. I, you know. You've got be... a copy left. You've got a save left. I... What, what are you thinking before, before uh... we do anything? What are you thinking? Well, I am thinking that it's the, the N is the national. And I'm thinking there's two A's. And one of them is aeronautic, and the other one is agency. And the S is for space. So I'm thinking that it's the National Aeronautic and Space Agency. And I'm also hoping that my save will come in handy if I get this wrong. But I don't think I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to go with that first A stands for aeronautic. <laughs> Steve, you said NASA stands for National Aeronautic Space Agency. Aeronautics, wow. Let's see what your classmate Spencer said. American. Did that pop into your head at all? <laughs> that could be the North American Space Agency. Oh, boy. I'll tell you this, Steve. The second A does not stand for agency. Uh -oh. It stands for administration. Oh. How you feeling now? I'm feeling like it really doesn't matter what the second A stands for. <laughs> And I'm really hoping that that first one stands for uh, what I said. Oh. Now, this guy helped you out before. Make you feel any better to see what he said? Oh, anything would make me feel better right now. <laughs> Jacob said, Alliance. Alliance. You weren't even thinking Alliance, were you? Oh, mm, nope. I was not thinking Alliance. I was thinking that it was aerospace. Did that pop into your mind? Oh. Yeah. I take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it was aerospace, this S would be kind of useless there, huh? Oh, I'm just going to hope that it's right. I'll tell you this, Jacob is wrong. That's good. That's good. <laughs> not that I wish you to not be right, but. More importantly, because Jacob couldn't do you any good, this guy has the chance of saving you. He's wrong. I thought it was aerospace, and I was wrong. <laughs> You're going to make me sweat, aren't you? No. I'm just itching to see you break dance, because you got $300,000! Yeah! Uh. <laughs> we'll be right back playing for $500,000 right after this. Dude! Our contestant, Steve Nalepa, has got $300,000. We have one subject left on the board. Now, you just busted a move for us with a little break dance. Oh, man. You're going to do the worm if we get up to half a million? Why not? Why not?
You still have your copy left. You still have your save left. Ooh. We're in thin air up here. We don't get this high very often. Oh, man. You ready to see yeah. the half a million dollar question? Let's bring it on. Let's do it. <laughs> the $500,000 question is, what revolutionary leader wrote the influential pamphlet, Common Sense, in 1776. What revolutionary leader wrote the influential pamphlet, Common Sense, in 1776? Spencer has locked in. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me remind you, you've got a copy left. He answered quickly. You've got a save left. Meaning if you answer wrong, but Spencer has the right answer, he can save you. You can go home right now. You can drop out of this little fifth grade class. I know you graduated Yale. You can drop out of this fifth grade class with $300,000 right now. That's a lot of money. Might be a little bit embarrassing for your alma mater. $300,000, pretty good payday. That is true. Oh, boy. Well, what do you, what do you uh, think? Do, do you know Revolutionary War history? Well, similar to, similar to the uh, Inauguration Day uh, question, Something popped into my head uh, right away. What popped into your head? Thomas Paine popped into my head. I'm and glad you didn't say January 20th. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's true. But, uh, oh boy. You've got Jeez. a copy left. You got a save left, or you can take $300,000 that is in your pocket right now. Shh. When you got up this morning, did you think you'd be making these kind of decisions today? Oh, man. I... Not knowing that a few hours later, you were going to have almost a third of a million dollars in your bank account. Well, You've answered nine of the ten questions on the board. Oh, boy. You answer this right, we are looking at the million dollar question. No. We have not had anyone win one million dollars on this show yet. I want to money. give it away to somebody that can break dance. Oh. But, but, the thing that makes me feel the worst on this show is to see somebody drop down to 25,000 from this high up the ladder. That is definitely a big drop. That's a big drop. Right now. But it's more than I started with. And, you know, it wouldn't be any fun if I just drop out now, would it? All right, Jeff, I'm going to be pretty daring here, and I'm going to trust that uh, Spencer will come in and save me. I'm going to go with Thomas Paine. Oh, boy. These guys are all in the fifth grade. Let's take a little stroll. What did Alana say? George Washington. Good did, old George. Did that occur to you as a possibility? Uh, he was too busy being a, being a general. <laughs> too busy to run to Kinko's and make some pamphlets? 
you know, he did chop down a cherry tree. He had a lot but. of common sense. She's in the fifth grade. Let's see what Marky said. George Washington. Oh. She's in the fifth grade. Let's see what Jacob said. Jacob said George Washington. They all like George Washington. Let's see what Kyle said. Kyle's in the fifth grade. Come on, Kyle. Washington. Well, he was around in 1776. I think he was around in 1776. <laughs> Steve, how you feeling? Oh, I'm pretty nervous, Jeff. But I'm, you know, I'm still. You want to see what Spencer said? Oh, I mean, so I would far, they're unanimous. Oh, I would love to see what Spencer said. What do you think he said? If you had to guess right now. Well, everyone else is going with George Washington. Everybody but you. Everybody but me. It's true. <laughs> well, he's either he's either going with Thomas Paine or George Washington. For five hundred thousand dollars, what revolutionary leader? wrote the influential pamphlet, Common Sense, in 1776. Spencer said, Thomas Paine, so he can't save you. You know what? He doesn't have to, because the correct answer is Thomas oh! Paine! Seen him do the worm. What would you do for a million dollars? I think I'm gonna faint. Faint. <laughs> that that might move. be fun to watch too. Uh, Steve, listen carefully. Up until this point, you had the opportunity to see every question before you decided if you were gonna drop out of school or not. On the million dollar question, you may not use your cheats, you may not have the assistance of your classmates. I can show you the subject, but once I show you the question, you have to answer it, okay? Ooh. You want to see the subject? Please. You want a million dollars? I would love a million dollars. That's kind of a stupid question, isn't it? Do you want a million dollars? <laughs> no judgment. How many people here would like a million dollars? <laughs> Steve. The subject for the million dollar question is fifth grade astronomy. Oof. Do not touch this button yet. You won 300,000 on a fifth grade astronomy question just a few minutes ago. I can't even remember what that question was at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Remember about NASA? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That got me a front row Oof. ticket to a break dance. <laughs> and you could be the first millionaire on this show. You could be. You could be. You could be the first person that did not have to look into that camera and say, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. We are as high up in this game as you can go. Only two other players have reached this level. There was Alex, the professional poker player, who saw the subject and decided to fold. Calling it quits at 500,000. You lock it up. Turns out he knew the answer. 
Who was the first U.S. Secretary of the Treasury? Alexander Hamilton. That's right. You would have made a million dollars. Uh, oh. We had John, a helicopter pilot, who also dropped out with $500,000. I'm dropping out of school, Jeff. And if he had taken the million dollar question, he would have dropped to $25,000 because he did not know the answer. John Zoll, you have got $500,000. Oh, that sure is a lot of money. You know what? These these guys have been rooting for you the whole time. What do y'all think? <laughs> Jeff, I'm going to go for it. for one million dollars next time on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Right now. with enough brains and guts to go for the million-dollar question. <laughs> Steve, yeah. you're either going to be a role model or a punchline. Punchline! <laughs> Steve, for the very first time on this program, we are seeing the million dollar question with a million dollars on the line. Here is the fifth grade astronomy question worth one million dollars. What was the name of the first satellite put into orbit by the United States? What was the name of the first satellite put into orbit by the United States? Oh, boy. Well. I know the Sputnik was the Russian satellite. And. The, the moon missions were, were the Apollo missions. Oh, 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 man, this is a tough question. Probably why it's worth so much. Well, you know. Take your time, there's no hurry. There is no hurry. Talk it out. What are you thinking, Steve? Well, there's two things that are coming to mind. The first instinct is telling me that it's Mercury. The second instinct is telling me Genesis. But, oh, well. Let's uh, read the question. What was the name of the first satellite put into orbit 
by the United States. You know what? I'm gonna go with my gut. I'm gonna say Mercury. Oh, oh boy. Steve, Mercury was the name of the first manned launch into orbit by the United States. The correct answer is Explorer. I am so sorry, oh, Steve. Oh. You had the guts to go for it, but you're still walking out of here with $25,000. You're leaving us with a great break dance. And one other thing. My name is Steven Aleppo. I may be a Yale graduate, but I am not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll be back with more Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader right after this. Last week, our contestant Carrie Ann Sheridan from Darwin, Australia, made $2,000. She's playing for $5,000. Now, Carrie Ann, Alana helped you with the first two questions. Pick another classmate and let's play for $5,000. You know, picking a classmate shouldn't be this hard of a decision. This is really the easy part of the game. Jacob. Jacob, come on up. All right, let's go, Jacob. Let's go. All right, well, let's find out. Is Carrie Ann Sheridan smarter than a fifth grader? Yeah! Pick a subject, Carrie Ann. All right, so. I am going to go with third grade spelling. Third grade spelling? Yeah, third grade spelling. The $5,000 question is, the word balloon has two sets of double letters, L, L, and O, O. How many sets of double letters are in the following word, bookkeeper? The word balloon has two sets of double letters, double L, double O. How many sets of double letters are in the word bookkeeper? As you know, your classmates can help you. Now, you have already used your copy but you still have a peek and a save left. Your classmate Jacob has locked in his answer. What are you thinking? Uh, there are two sets of double letters in the word bookkeeper. It says on here you work at a veterinarian's office. What do you do there? Um, I actually do admissions. So I've bookkeeping, kind of. <laughs> eh, kind of. <laughs> no. You're wrong. <gasps> there are more than two sets in the word bookkeeper. Mm, there is. <laughs> Let's put the word bookkeeper up on the board and count them out. Help me out here, Carrie Ann. Count them out. One, One two, two, three. three. <laughs> the only way that you keep taking this test. The only way? <laughs> is if this fifth grader over here it's right. has saved you. Yeah. How many sets of double letters are in the word bookkeeper? If Jacob said three, you've got $5,000. If he didn't, you have nothing. For $5,000, can we see what Jacob said? Three! Okay, you just used your save. You have used your copy. How are you feeling? 
for your freight and you've got five thousand dollars okay I feel good <laughs> you're playing for ten thousand let's pick another subject i will go with third grade social studies third grade social studies <laughs> carrie ann the ten thousand dollar question is the United Nations headquarters are in what city? The United Nations headquarters are in what city? Classmate Jacob has locked in his answer. What do you think of Carrie Ann? I have no idea. So I don't I... believe that. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I mean, it's really not about dignity anymore. <laughs> it's about the money. Yes, it's about the money. So I am going to peek. You're going to peek? Yes. Let's see what Jacob said. The United Nations headquarters are in what city? New York City. How's that feel? I don't know, but I'm going to have to go with it anyway, because I don't know. So, yeah, New York City. Locking it in. The city's so nice, they named it twice. He's right. <laughs> you got the United Nations headquarters are located in New York City. Good job, bud. Bye, Jacob. Thank you. Jacob has to return to the classroom because you have used both of your cheats and your save. This next question is a big question because if you get the $25,000 question right, no matter what happens the rest of the game, you've got at least $25,000. Take a deep breath. Let's pick a subject. I'm going to go with first grade measurements. First grade measurements. The $25,000 question is coming up when we come back. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Carrie Ann Shurtum, has got $10,000. Yeah. The $25,000 question, Carrie Ann, is this. True or false, in a leap year, there are more days in January and February combined than there are in November and December combined. True or false, in a leap year, there are more days in January and February combined than there are in November and December combined. Oh my God, this is so much harder than it looks on TV. <laughs> You can walk out of here with $10,000. Do you know how many days are in the months of the year? Yes. January, there's uh, 31. Um, in February, regularly, there's 28 days. And leap year is 29, if I'm correct. Let's be bold and try to add those two together. <laughs> Twenty-nine and thirty-one 29. is because we got to combine them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go with false. <laughs> what was that based on? Anything? Just a gut feeling? It's like you either make the turn or you don't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know that any of us made the turn with you there. <laughs> Look up at the board. Let me show you something. 
You said false. Uh huh. January has 31, February has 29, that equals 60. November has 30, December 31, that's 61. The correct answer is false. You have 25,000. You're about to cry, you okay? <gasps> My cheeks are hurting. <laughs> are you surprised that we've made it this far? We're halfway through the test. It's the worst thing that happened. You leave here with 25,000. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> We're halfway to a million. Kids, did you think she'd make it this far? No. <laughs> Pick a subject. Let's turn 25 into 50, okay? <laughs> Okay, yeah. I, I'm gonna go with second grade literature. Second grade literature. Yeah. The $50,000 question, Carrie Ann, is this. Which is a fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen? The Duchess and the Door, The Princess and the Pea, or The Lady and the Lion? which is a fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. The Duchess and the Door, The Princess and the Pea, The Lady and the Lion. One of these sound familiar? Yeah. A and C don't really sound familiar to me, but B, I remember that story. Hans Christian Andersen sounds familiar. I don't know if the two go together, but you know what? I'm gonna go with B, The Princess and the Pea. I think the Duchess in the Door and the Lady in the Lion don't sound familiar. No, they don't ring a bell. You know why? Why? We made them up. You're right. You got $50,000. <laughs> I gotta tell you, this is just fun to watch. Uh, <laughs> wow. You got $50,000, Carrie Ann. <laughs> I urge you, do not answer too quickly, okay? The next question is worth $100,000. Pick a subject. <laughs> Fourth grade science. Yeah. Carry in the $100,000 question is. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. Which subatomic particle is not contained within the nucleus of an atom? A proton, an electron, or a neutron? Which subatomic particle is not contained in the nucleus of an atom? Proton, electron, or neutron? Good news is it's another multiple choice question. Oh, Bad news, words. I can't even read the question. Uh, <laughs> which subatomic which subatomic particle is not contained within the nucleus of an atom? A proton, electron, or a neutron? You can walk out of here with $50,000. You've been one lucky student today. The luck might continue. You answer this one right, you're going to be on the poster in a lot of science labs, <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> Let's talk this out. Do you know what a proton is? No. Do you know what an electron is? No. <clears throat> Do you know what a neutron is? <laughs> See, that's gonna make this a little more difficult. <laughs> now, there's a lot of guys that would hate to see you go. Probably a lot of guys that would just watch you read the phone book. 
What you thinking, Carrie Ann? I, I'm gonna drop out. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna drop out. Now, we said earlier, Lady Luck was on your side. If you had had to guess at this, what would you have guessed? I probably would have gone with Electron. Let's see the visual explanation on the board. Electron, nucleus, proton, neutron. The one that's outside the nucleus is the Electron. You would have had $100,000. But you got $50,000. Now, yes, remember I the little know. deal we had up front, Carrie Ann. Look in the camera and tell the world. I am 26 years old, but I am not smarter than a fifth grader. But you got $50,000, and we'll be right yes, back I right do. after this. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? You guys ready to meet our new students? Yeah. He is a 53-year-old mortgage loan officer who attended Ellsworth Elementary School in Ellsworth, Kansas. Please welcome Earl Bell. Hi, Earl. How are you? Welcome to the show. Woo! I'm excited. <laughs> oh, no. oh, look oh, at you, God. Earl. Now, I guess this is when you attended Ellsworth Elementary? Ellsworth Elementary. And Ellsworth is near Wichita, right? Uh, north of Wichita, about two hours, 120 miles. I got you. Right in the middle of the state. My wife actually has family in Derby, right outside of Wichita. Really? So, yeah, okay. welcome to the it's show. A of During the course of the show, these guys are going to be taking the same quiz that you are. Okay. So pick one classmate okay. and let's get started. All right. All right. Woo -hoo. <laughs> now, Earl, if any point this grade school quiz gets to be too intimidating, you can drop out of school with the money you've earned. Okay. But before you leave, make me a promise. You're going to look into the camera and tell the world <laughs> I am not smarter than a fifth grader. We got a deal. All right, let's find out. Is Earl Belt smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> All right, Earl, pick your first subject. OK, Kyle, what are you good at? Science and history, he said. Uh, let's start with first grade animal science. First grade animal science. Got the bottom of the ladder, here yeah. we go. The $1,000 question is, a group of wolves is called a pack. What do we call a group of lions? A prestige, a pride, or a pint? A group of wolves is called a pack. What do we call a group of lions? What do we call a prestige, a pride, or a pint. Your classmate Kyle has locked in his answer. What are you thinking, Earl? Well, a group of wolves is called a pack. What do we call a group? <laughs> we know of, that. Uh, a group of lions. We don't have lions in Kansas, so, but I'm gonna say, um, be pride. Be pride. <laughs> you don't have lions in Kansas. No. Uh -uh. But Kansas has pride in you because you got a thousand bucks. Yeah! Woo! Good job, man. Good job. All right, Earl. We're not in Kansas anymore, but we are playing for two thousand dollars. Pick another subject. Second grade earth science. Second grade earth science. Earl, the two thousand dollar question is. True or false, all snowflakes are 10-sided geometric figures. True <laughs> or false, all snowflakes are 10-sided geometric figures. Your classmate Kyle has locked in his answer. Now, you said you didn't have lions in Kansas. You have snow we in have Kansas. We have snow. <laughs> we have plenty of snow. OK. I know that there are no snowflakes. There's no two snowflakes alike. Right. But. I've never counted the edges on a snowflake. I know <laughs> you don't eat yellow snow. That's correct. <laughs> now, you know you have your cheeks left. You yes, can peek at I, Kyle's I'm gonna, paper. I, I'm going to have to peek at Kyle's answer on that. I'm sorry. I should know this, but it's just, I'm going to peek. 
All right, your fifth grade classmate Kyle said true or false, all snowflakes are 10-sided geometric figures. Kyle said false. How's that feel? I mean, it's 50-50 chance. I know, but I'm feeling, oh my, oh my. This is, this is not good. <laughs> true or false, all snowflakes are 10-sided geometric figures. If you don't know, you could guess true. Mm -hmm. And if true is the incorrect answer, and he says false, your save kicks in and you're still here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you will, you will use your peak and your save, but you'll still be with us. I mean, you have a blizzard of options here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to go false. You wanna lock that okay. in? Yeah. I just really lost it on that one. <laughs> I gave you the strategy. You know, I'm not supposed to help people. I gave you the strategy because yeah. I like you, but you didn't use it. <laughs> Good thing it didn't matter because you're right. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I got $2,000, girl. <laughs> Most snowflakes are actually six-sided. Very nice work, Kyle. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. It's time to pick another class okay. grader. Here we go with Marky. Marky, come on up here. Okay. You've good. got two thousand dollars, Earl. Let's turn it into five. Pick another okay. subject. Marky, what are you good at? Um, I would either go with math or spelling. Let's go with uh, math. First grade math. All right. The five thousand dollar question is. Kyle has $2 in change in his pocket, <laughs> consisting of only nickels and dimes. If he has 13 dimes, how many nickels does Kyle have? Kyle has $2 in change in his pocket, consisting of only nickels and dimes. If he has 13 <laughs> dimes, how many nickels does Kyle have? All right, your classmate Marky has locked in her answer. Okay. You're a loan officer. You don't have your calculator yeah, with you. <laughs> what are you thinking? Okay, 13 dimes is a dollar and 30 cents. And I hate to have to do this, but I'm going to have to count this out just so I don't make the mistake. 40, uh, for two, two nickels is another dime, obviously. There's 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, a dollar, okay, times two, 14 nickels. <laughs> it's tough. Let's see what Marky said. Marky said 14 nickels. The bad news is she can't save you because you guys have the same answer. You have the same correct answer. Yeah! You got $5,000. Thank you. All right, Earl, you got 5,000. Let's turn it into 10,000. Pick another subject. Spelling. Spelling? <laughs> okay. I think we want to go for second grade spelling. Second grade spelling. The $10,000 question is coming up right after this. fifth grader, our contestant Earl Belt has $5,000. He has selected second grade spelling for his $10,000 question. Earl, the $10,000 question is, how many times does the letter L appear in the following phrase? Awfully full. How many times does the letter L appear in the following phrase? Awfully full. Your classmate, Marky, has locked in her answer. You get this question right, your checking account's gonna be awfully full of money. Thank you. <laughs> the letter L appears in the following phrase four times. I like that. You like that? I like that. All right, Earl, how did you come to that? Let's spell <laughs> it out. How do, you, how do you spell awfully? A W F U. L L Y, full is F U L L. Oh. 
Was that good? What do you think, Marky? Is he right? Yep. Yeah! Lori? <laughs> She's right. You're right. You got $10,000, Earl. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Right. Nice work, Thank Marky. You. Thank you. All right, Earl, time to pick another classmate. Okay. All right. Spencer! Spencer! Come on up. Hi, Spencer. How are you? I'm hey, now, Earl, I know you brought some people here today to root for you. Will right. you introduce them to Spencer and myself? Spencer, there's my family over there. Part of Hi. them, okay? Hey. You guys nervous? Is this making you nervous? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> I am. That's what family's all about. Pick another subject. Let's go. Fourth grade geography? Yeah. Okay, let's fourth grade geography. Fourth grade geography. <laughs> Jumping up to the fourth grade, make you a little nervous, Earl? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> Makes me nervous. Here we go. The $25,000 question is, the majority of Yellowstone National Park is located in what U.S. state? The majority of Yellowstone National wow. Park is located in what U.S. state? Classmate Spencer has locked in his answer. What are you thinking, Earl? Well, I'm thinking, thinking Wyoming. I'm also thinking Nevada. Golly, I'm gonna go with Wyoming. I will tell you this, 1% is located in Idaho. Okay. 3% of Yellowstone National Park is located in Montana. Montana. There we go. I will tell you this, your classmate Spencer has the correct answer. Spencer said 96% of Yellowstone National Park is located in Wyoming. Oh, You're right, that's $25,000. <laughs> 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 Man, Spencer, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, see, Earl, that's a big deal because the worst thing that can happen now is you're walking out of here with at least $25,000. That makes my day. Yeah. Woo! This question's almost a freebie. The worst that can happen is where you're at right now. It's the $50,000 question. Pick a subject. Let's go get it. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go. Fifth grade life science. Fifth grade life science. Okay, buddy. You and me. Our $50,000 question is, in the human body, the adrenal glands are located directly above what organ? All right. In the human body, the adrenal glands are located directly above what organ? Your classmate, Spencer, has locked in his answer. Good. In what the human thinking? body, the adrenal glands are located directly above what organ? And I'm going to say the organ is kidneys. Whoa. What made you say that? Um, my sister's a doctor, and she tells me my, my adrenals are always trashed because I'm drinking too much coffee, and I'm going too fast, and I need to slow down. And I'm just thinking, if I remember right, she's telling me they're on top of the kidneys. You know what? The next time she tells you your adrenals are trash, Tell her they got you $50,000. The adrenal glands are located directly above the kidney. All right, guys. Good work, Spencer. All right, Earl. We're going for $100,000. Pick another classmate. I want Alana. Alana. Is that a good answer? That was a good answer. Hello, Alana. Hey, Alana. How are you doing? How are you today, sweetie? Great, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. Well, guess Good. what? We are playing for $100,000 <laughs> when we come back. <laughs> Our contestant, Earl Belt, has $50,000. Woo! I'm excited. We have a chance right now to turn that into $100,000. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Woo! OK, Lana, what are you good at? Geography and music. Geography, Geography and music. music. 
Let's go uh, third grade world geography. Third grade world geography. The $100,000 question is, the Ring of Fire is an area of seismic activity around the edge of which ocean? The Ring of Fire is an area of seismic activity around the edge of what ocean? The classmate Alana has locked in her answer. I thought it was a Johnny Cash song, yeah. so. I remember that song. All right, you have a copy left. You have a save left. Now, do you know what seismic means? I have no idea. <laughs> I am just totally lost on this one. You know, I'm just going to have to copy Alana's answer. Whoa. I don't know. I don't have any idea. On that. The Ring of Fire is an area of seismic activity around the edge of which ocean? Earl, if you had to guess, what would you have said? Indian Ocean? You would have been wrong. The correct answer is the Pacific Ocean. For $100,000, may we see what Alana said. Pacific Ocean! Look, that's over the top, baby. That's over the top. Woo! You go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice work, Alana. <laughs> Earl. Yeah. We're playing for $175,000. That's a lot of money, man. A lot of money. Let's go do it. Pick a subject. Fourth grade music. Fourth, Fourth grade, grade music. music. All right. Our $175,000 question is, what is the first name of the legendary 18th century German composer, Beethoven? Bum, 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 bum. Thanks. What is the first name of the legendary 18th century German composer, Beethoven? Your classmate, Alana, has locked in her answer. I took piano lessons when I was real young. And uh, I remember having a little statuette of Ludwig van Beethoven. Yeah. Earl? Yeah? You got $175,000. You still have a save left. You have $175,000. <laughs> Earl, we're playing for $300,000. $300,000? You have one classmate left. Jacob, come on up. Come on, buddy. You think he can win $300,000? I think he could win a million. He thinks he can win a million. <laughs> Earl, we have two subjects left on the board. Pick one of them, let's turn it into $300,000. All right. Fifth grade history. Fifth grade history. The $300,000 question is, during the U.S. Civil War, what city in Virginia was the capital of the Confederacy? During the U.S. Civil War, what city in Virginia was the capital of the Confederacy? During the U.S. Civil War. Jacob, you know, when I was in school, I used to hope that that's where they had written the answers to. Yeah. Earl, I want you to remember before you answer, mm -hmm. you can walk away with $175,000. Right. Because if you answer incorrectly, you're gonna drop down to $25,000. That's correct. Your classmate Jacob has locked in his answer. Anything coming to mind, Earl? Oh boy, this one's tough. Um, Virginia, Virginia, Virginia. 
What are you thinking? I'm thinking I hope Jacob knows this. He can save you. Um, but if he's wrong, you're going to drop down to 25000 What are you thinking, Earl? I'm thinking Roanoke, Virginia. Roanoke. <laughs> That's a long pause. You locked in Roanoke. You feel confident with that? I feel more confident that Jacob's got the right answer. Let me ask your wife, Carol, how do you feel about that? I'm scared. You're yeah. scared. I'll tell you this, Earl. Jacob is wrong. I kind of thought so. Oh, man. Let's see what Jacob said. During the U.S. Civil War, what city in Virginia was the capital of the Confederacy? Jacob said Virginia City. Earl. He wasn't the only one that was wrong. You're wrong. During the U.S. Civil War, what city in Virginia was the capital of the Confederacy? You had the right first letter. It was Richmond. Oh. I'm so sorry, Earl. But you're still leaving us with $25,000. Yeah, I am. Congratulations. Before you leave, Earl, look into the camera and tell the world. I'm Earl Belt from Wichita, Kansas. And I am not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody.